If you want to start writing music that includes more than just the seven notes of a scale, well, you should learn your alter dominant chords and how to use them. This can be a very confusing topic, but what I'm going to do in this video is only focus on two alter dominant chords and the theory on how they're built, but most importantly, how can we use them? And those strategies you'll be able to apply everywhere for the rest of your musical career. So if you encounter more complex alter dominant chords, you'll know exactly what to do with them and how to use them. Now, before we go around and just start altering dominant chords, we should know what a regular dominant chord is first. So there are really four default dominant chords. There's dominant seventh, dominant ninth, 11th, and 13th. But you see, they all share this common structure of a root, a third, a fifth, and a flat seventh. So that's going to be the dominant chord we'll work with today. Just to simplify things, we're only working with dominant seventh. All right. So in the key of G, if I start on the root of G, a G dominant seven, which we just call G7, is G, B, D, F. That's a root, a third, a fifth, and a flat seven. So that's a regular dominant chord. It has not been altered. How do we alter it? There's only two things we can do with this chord to alter it. We can take that fifth and we can augment it. All right, that would be a G7 sharp five. Or we can take that fifth and we can lower it. That would be a G7 flat five. That's it. That's the only way you can alter a dominant chord is to lift its fifth up or lift its fifth down, because this is the only dominant chord we have. We'll, we'll expand on this a little bit later, but right now that's the only alterations we can make to G7. Now you piano players out there are gonna have a million ways to play these chords. Us guitarists, it's a little bit more limited. The shape I'm gonna give you for G7 with a sharp five is gonna look like this, but you could also play it higher on your fretboard like this. And then for G7 with a flat five, we can play it like that, or we could play it like this. And you're hearing these are some pretty crunchy chords, right? They don't have a lot of uh, stability in them. So you might be asking yourself, how am I supposed to use these chords? Well, there's a very simple answer. Just any time you see a chord that represents this, you play an altered dominant chord instead. So hopefully you know what this means. This is the dominant chord of a key. If you don't know what this means, you should study some of my basic lessons on just the diatonic chords. But this means the fifth triad, and we've extended it to be a seventh chord. So this chord, like in the key of C, for example, here's a C major, this chord would be G7, and G7 pulls our ear back to C, correct? Doesn't that sound nice? Doesn't it really land us to C major? Well, instead of doing G7, do an altered G7. Try G7 with a sharp five. Doesn't that sound nice, right? Doesn't that all of a sudden add some ritzy, jazzy flavor into my dominant tetonic resolution? Let's try this with the other altered dominant chord. Here's a G7 with a flat five, and you can hear it actually does resolve quite well to just a regular C major. Now we're really only one step away from writing jazz chord progressions here. What we'll do is start playing two five one progressions and extend them diatonically and then introduce this altered dominant chord. To clarify, here is a two five one. We've got D minor, G major, C. Now let's extend those diatonically. So D minor can diatonically become D minor seven, G major can become G seven, and then C major could become C major seven. Right? Now if we swap out that dominant chord for an altered dominant chord, what we're gonna have is D minor seven, G seven sharp five, C major seven. That's a beautiful jazz cadence. Let's try this again with that other altered dominant chord. We'll have D minor seven. This time we'll have G seven with a flat five. And then let's resolve up to C major seven. Now, I guess that sounds fine, but I really don't like it. Because if we listen to our melody note, listen to that highest note, it was going from an F to a D flat and then up to an E. This is where voice leading becomes very important. That melody of isn't very uh, smooth to my ears. So let's just take the same chords same notes, but maybe try to rearrange them so that note or whatever the melody note is just a little bit more sensible. And to do that, here's what I've done is I've rephrased my D minor seven to sound like this. And then we're still gonna play G seven with a flat five. And then when we get back to C major, we're gonna play it as a C major nine. So that ninth is a D and it gives my melody this opportunity to go like this. That's now what's happening on top. Thank you. 
So those are the basics. An altered dominant chord is a regular dominant chord whose fifth has been displaced up or down a half step. We use these in replacement of regular dominant chords to create extra resolving power to the tonic. And when we do this, we often have to use voice leading techniques to help make sure that everything is copacetic and neat. But to take this a step further is actually very easy. One of my favorite things to do is take a unaltered dominant chord and then match it up right next door to its altered counterpart. So if, for example, we're in the key of C here. Um, what if we did a D minor seven and then a regular G seven, but pair it up next to an altered G7. So you hear the chromatic interest that adds in there? So we're hearing the G7 become altered, which really pulls our ear up to create extra chromatic interest. We could also try this in reverse. Here's a D minor seven, and then we start with an altered G seven, and then we unalter it, which creates melodic motion, melodic momentum to resolve us downward to C. Now our last strategy here should really open up a lot of doors and plant us firmly into the world of jazz chord progressions. What we're gonna do is apply everything we've just learned, but in a secondary fashion. So I hope you know what secondary dominants are. I did an entire video on that. But to summarize, in the key of C, I have C major as my triad. I have E minor as my three chord, just for example. If I wanted to get to this E minor, what I could do is first play its dominant chord. So the dominant of E minor would be B7, right? So a cool way to get to E minor is to first play B7, right? But what we learned in this video is that anytime you see a dominant seventh chord, try altering it instead. So let's do that. Let's play C major seven. And then let's play a B, an altered B7, right? And that helps take us to E minor instead. And we also learned that it sounds nice to kind of pair up altered dominant chords with unaltered dominant chords. So let's try that out. Here's a C major seven. Here's a regular B7. We alter it and that takes us to E minor, all right? This is starting to sound like jazz to my ears. And what I've done is put this simple chord progression together that demonstrates all the principles that we've discussed here today. And it's a, only four measures long, but in my opinion, it sounds like a decent jazz chord progression. And we get to experience two different altered chords, one that's operating just on the regular dominant principles and one that is operating as a secondary dominant instead. As I hinted in the beginning of this video, there are like hundreds and maybe thousands of altered dominant chords, and it goes way beyond this. What you really need to know is that first off, any altered dominant chord can just be written with this symbol, seven alt, all right? This is like shorthand for, I don't care how you've altered the dominant chord, but you've clearly altered the dominant chord. We'll just put this there instead. That does not give us a lot of information on what gets changed. So if a whole band is trying to interpret this at the same time, it might sound like a mess because one guy's flatting the fifth, somebody else is, you know, sharping the fifth. So if you see this with your group, try to plan out ahead of time what you're actually doing. But for you, I need you to understand that there is a next level of altered dominant chord and that's when the ninth becomes present. The ninth is also an alterable tone. If we take the ninth and we displace it up a half step or down a half step, while well, either of those chromatic neighbors to the ninth also is considered an altered dominant chord. So we only talked about the very, very basics of altered dominant chords here today, but I want to kind of give you some basic definition here now of all of the altered dominant chords. You can kind of classify them all as the following. They all contain one, three, and flat seven. But if they have chromatic neighbors to the fifth, it's an altered dominant. Or if they have chromatic neighbors to the ninth, it's an altered dominant chord. And yes, if you go through all the octaves and enharmonics, you realize, oh, chromatic neighbors of the ninth are actually my minor third and my flatted second. So yeah, it gets really confusing after that. But I hopefully, by just kind of working with the basic dominant chords, this gives you a good idea of why they're important and how you can start working with them. So I hope this video was helpful. If you really enjoy this chord theory stuff, you should definitely check out my book, The Chord Progression Codex. All of this stuff is explained there and a lot more. We go through plenty of altered dominant chords, and that's at about chapter 27. So it's 
26 levels of information and knowledge to build you up to the point where once you learn those altered dominant chords, you're completely confident on how to use them. But if you don't want to buy my stuff, I get it. Maybe just like this video, subscribe to this channel, and share this video with your friends if you enjoyed it. Or consider signing up to my Patreon. My Patreon is the reason I don't do sponsorships or ads in the middle of my videos, is because my Patreon supporters give me a few bucks a month to keep this channel going. So if you want to join them, you can. There's links below in the description. Or lastly, just check out my website. I've got some fun courses there. Some are free, some are name your own price, and some are at a premium price as well. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.